This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In fact, that introduction is not applicable to this video because this is a UPBGE tutorial. So if you didn't come for the Blender game engine, maybe uh, leave this video. So. Uh, what am I going to teach you in this one? Well, I wanted to do another video about making a simple video game because last time we did Pong and I figure this time let's take it up just a bit. It's still a physics-based game to Breakout, which I think is one of the, if not the first game that released on Atari. Now, this game isn't complete in the sense of there's no way to lose. Like if the ball goes off, it just goes off to infinity and uh, there's no way to win because once you get all the blocks, nothing happens. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about the general physics mechanics and how you can make a cube delete after a collision and get the bare bones of the game. If you want to take it to completion, your problem? No, uh, I might make a part two. So uh, let's talk about how to make this. Don't need to exit full screen to do that. So uh, before we begin, I just want to give a bit of a disclaimer. I'm using UPBGE version 0.3. Uh, which means we're running off of Blender 3.0. So some of the stuff's outdated. Uh, if you're using 0.36 alpha, uh, it's going to be different. So uh, to make Breakout, what do we need? I'm going to delete everything, and I'm going to start with our paddle, our character. In edit mode, I'm just going to bring this cube and make it skinnier. And there you go. That's our character. In fact, our character basically only has a single mechanic, uh, which is moving left and right. So let's incorporate that. So... Uh, with our logic node editor, which is the point of Blender Game Engine, we can actually uh, program logic uh, using nodes and bricks and all of this. I'm going to select my character, add a new node group. I'm going to call it character. And then the step that everybody seems to forget, and by that I mean myself, uh, make sure that in the dashboard you click apply to selected. Otherwise, this uh, node group doesn't necessarily belong or is inherited by our character. So now you can see this is in the game properties. Okay, how do we make this thing move? Uh, really, this is just an extension of what we did in the last tutorial. So this time, instead of moving up and down, we're going to move left and right. So I'm going to use two key down nodes set to key down, uh, telling us when we are hitting the right arrow and the left arrow. Right is going to be right, left is going to be left, and really, uh, we can think about this as motion on the x-axis is the way we're going to do this mathematically. Basically, again, the same thing as last time. I'm going to take this and subtract one from the other. The way you want to think about this is right arrow is a positive contribution. It's going this way on the x-axis. And uh, left arrow is a negative contribution, which is why we are subtracting. Uh, we can take this and merge it into an xy vector. It doesn't need to be an xyz because we're only concerned with the x-axis. And uh, we just need to make this thing move. So we are going to do an apply movement. Uh, there are other ways to do this with forces and inertia and all this. I'm just going to do the most basic scenario. So I'm going to apply a movement using the local coordinate system to our own object. Remember, this is saying uh, we are referencing the object, the node group it belongs to, right? So we're saying use the character and then use this as the vector. Final thing, we need a condition basically saying when should we apply the movement uh, using our vector. And what we want to say is all the time. So on update, you could also just put in one in the condition, I believe. Uh, so let's save what we have so far. I'm going to call it breakout progress. And if we load our game with P, you can see we can move our character uh, too much, uh, which is kind of the scenario that we keep running into because the game updates so fast, 60 frames per second, that every frame we're moving a lot. To fix this, I'm going to multiply by 0.2. Or in other words, we are going from 100% speed to 20% speed. There we go. So now we have a character uh, that can move. Um, next two things, three things. We need to make the stage. Uh, we need to make our sphere, the ball. And we need to make the blocks that we are trying to hit. We are trying to break out. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a cube. And you could model this as a single component. But I'm just going to do it as three uh, because it's easy to do it that way. So we have this one, we have this one, and then duplicate, rotate by 90 degrees on the y-axis, and then scale this down, and that is our third component. So the reason I'm doing this as a three parts, by the way, uh, you might be wondering, instead of like one model, 
one, it's easier to do it this way. But second of all, since this is a physics thing, like the ball is going to interact with this and bounce off of it, uh, I figure it's easier to say this is one physics object and this is another and this is another instead of saying that it's this convex thing and it needs to look at the triangular mesh. It's just easier, okay? Uh, so here are our walls. And then finally, uh, we just have to add a ball. And once we take care of the ball, uh, then we can start talking about adding in our blocks. So uh, if we run our game, what do we have? We have this, it's a little hard to see. We have this and we can move the character. Um, in fact, just a bit of a quality of life thing. Let me just make a uh, material uh, so it's easier to see. So I'm just making a pure emissive RGB material that the ball is gonna inherit and then we can hit Control L uh, to link the materials. So this is not gonna use uh, environmental lighting. It's just gonna be pure uh, red. So we have, a, uh, we have our setup and the thing can move. But, uh, of course, this needs to be driven uh, by physics. So, first thing we do is we take our ball, we'd go to physics, and we say, this should be moving, okay? Uh, so, we set it to dynamic, pretty simple. And now you can see, it's there, and it has gravity, which isn't really what we want. Uh, this shouldn't be uh, respecting gravity at all. So, how do we get rid of that? Uh, well, what we can do is we can go to our scene properties, scene logic, and just take the gravity and bring it to zero. You could also like make the force uh, contribution or influence zero for that object, uh, but because we don't want gravity for any of the other ones, I say just get rid of the gravity for the entire scene. Now we have this. Uh, the sphere is a physics object, but it's not moving. Uh, we need to give it a initial push, okay? Uh, we're gonna do this very similar to how we did it in Pong. I'm going to make a new tree I'm gonna call it ball, make sure it's inherited. So always click that apply to selected. So now it's a game property. And what I'm thinking is we want to apply a force in the beginning in a random direction. So it can go up here or it can go directly downwards. There are some cases we don't want where it goes directly to the left or right, but again, we can take care of that later. Uh, so I want to apply force only in the beginning of the game. So I'm gonna look at on initialization. So this is literally gonna activate one time uh, but because we want the force to just apply for a little bit of time so it actually gets going, you don't want to hit it for like a split second, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to set a timer for 0.1 seconds. So in other words, I want for on initialization for the first uh, 0.1 seconds, it should be applying a force. And I'm going to use a not uh, logic operator because we want to say that the condition of when it's applying our force is when this timer has not elapsed. So when the timer is not done. In other words, for the first 0.1 seconds where it hasn't finished yet, uh, we want to apply a force. Again, to our source object, the one that has the uh, node group. And then as for the vector, I'm gonna randomize it. To do this, I'm gonna use the angle approach again. So I'm gonna use a random float, which we can initialize. So once the game starts, we're gonna get a random number and I'm gonna make that number between zero and 360, uh, saying that it's gonna pick an arbitrary degree. So if it's degree zero, it's gonna shoot this way. If it's degree 90, it's gonna shoot upwards, et cetera. And if you want it to be fancy, you could uh, set cases of random numbers that we don't want. Um, okay, so uh, here's our random float. I want to convert this into an actual direction vector because right now this is just an angle and we know that we can do that using sines and cosines. So I'm gonna take this and take the sine and cosine of A, so this is cosine of A, this is sine of A, and we wanna take this and uh, combine it into a vector. Now, you might think that we want just an XY vector because there's two components, uh, but that is deceptive. You want an XYZ vector because, yes, we're going on the X axis, but this up and down is actually a Z, which is why gravity was moving it downwards. So. Okay, everybody, we paused this tutorial to bring you a message from our sponsor, Squarespace, which has been sponsoring the channel for a long time, and I'm very thankful for that. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it is the best and the easiest way to make a beautiful website. Uh, you don't need to know how to code or anything like this. Uh, you literally just drag around blocks or squares uh, to build and customize and design your website. Uh, three features that you might care about when it comes to Squarespace that makes your experience the best is one, you get access to analytics. So you know who is going to your website, where are they from, the amount of traffic, uh, which might guide certain decisions, right? So you wanna know demographic information. 
Second of all, we have an asset library now, which means that we actually have like a folder or a saved archive of any media uh, that we uploaded to our, our website. So whether that be photos, videos, audio, it's gonna save it. And finally, the most obvious feature of Squarespace is how you make your website. You just drag around squares. It, it really couldn't get easier than that. And the templates still look great, even though it's easy to use. So, so head over to Squarespace and try making yourself a website for whatever reason you wanna make a website. And you can use my link in the description, it will be below, uh, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. In other words, this should be connected to X, this should be connected to Z, and this should be our force vector. Now, when we start this, a little hard to tell, but it is moving but obviously we didn't give it enough of a push. So here is a little clever hack. I'm going to use a number, a float, uh, to multiply or scale both of these components. So basically I'm adding an input to the B. Uh, let's say that input is 20, and I'm gonna say take cosine A and multiply it by B, and take sine A and multiply it by B. So I'm taking the same thing as before, uh, but we are scaling it by B for each component. So now when we play this, you can see it launches. And it does collide, but it's, it kind of like loses speed each time it does it. Uh, so still not perfect. First thing I want to do is I want to give it more of an initial push. So I'm increasing it, uh, which makes it look like this. But then you can see after the collision, it kind of loses momentum. So we want to make sure that energy is not transferred when we collide. Like there's no friction, there's no, there's maximum elasticity, etc. Uh, the way we do that is for our ball, go to the physics and make sure elasticity is set to one and friction is set to zero. And that should also be the case uh, for anything we're interacting with, anything that hits it. So uh, our barriers, our walls uh, should have friction zero and elasticity one. Uh, when you have two elastic objects colliding, uh, what we expect is that no energy will be transferred. They perfectly bounce off of each other. So let's see what this looks like. There you go. So you can see it had an initial push. <laughs> well, it, it left the stage, which is something I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but you can see it's actually colliding. Uh, now, the question is, why did it... <laughs> uh, the question is, why did it leave the stage that one time? Uh, it, there we go. It happened again. Uh, we don't expect that to happen. Remember, this is a three-dimensional scene. And if the collision has any error sending it into the y-axis, it's eventually going to leave the bounds. So I'm gonna take this ball, and in physics, I'm gonna lock the Y translation, which should help. I think that should solve the problem. If not, we need to add more physics steps. But that seems to be working. So now it's staying uh, inside the bounds that we want. Uh, final thing, we need to add one more collider, which of course is the blocks on top, uh, but it also has to have the mechanic that once it gets hit, uh, it disappears. Not too hard. We can do that by adding in a cube. Again, it's three-dimensional, but we don't care. Um, our cube is going to be static because we don't want it to move, but it should have physics. So it's not going to be no collision. It's just going to be static with full elasticity and zero friction. And we need to make more logic for this one. So I'm going to call this block disappear. How do you spell disappear? I don't know if that's correct. Again, apply to selected, so this is now a game property. Now what we wanna say, so let's see what this looks like when we launch, and by the way, this should uh, inherit our material, so I'm going to link the material. Uh, you can see when it gets hit, wow, it just perfectly avoided it, there we go. Uh, it bounces, but it doesn't disappear. So how do we get it to disappear? Well, what we want is after it gets hit by the ball, and only by the ball, um, it should remove itself, right? So we wanna say on collision, that's our condition, delete yourself. Which is kind of like, imagine somebody's bullying you and you're like, yo, delete yourself. Don't say that to people. Okay, take the cube. We, we care about when there is a collision, so obviously we want a collision node, and it has a whole bunch of properties, but here's the only ones we care about. Uh, we care about how often are we checking each frame. On each frame, I wanna know if it's colliding, because eventually it might happen, just not on the first frame. What object are we looking at? Self-referential. So again, the thing that has the node group, which is actually very important because we're going to take this and duplicate it a bunch of times. So it should always be self-referential. And then we care about when it is colliding. So what you might expect is once it collides, there is a um, node called remove object, uh, which basically means delete object. So under the collision condition, 
uh, delete yourself. And let's see how that looks. Of course, we need to play this enough times that it actually gets a collision. And I could force that by choosing, here we go. There we go. I could do that by choosing uh, the force vector, uh, but this actually has a bit of a problem. You might think this works, but it doesn't. I'll show you why. Uh, so now I'm gonna take these and duplicate it, which will actually cause an issue in a second. So again, you can actually like size these correctly. I'm just like doing this as a bit of a demo. So I'm gonna have three rows and let's see what this looks like. So again, all these objects should have the thing inherited. Now, uh, if you were looking closely, you might've noticed the issue just there. So sometimes it bounces off perfectly, but sometimes it actually like passes through without any collision. It just did it right there. Um, and I guess we also need a, there we go. You have control over like which direction it gets hit. Uh, but sometimes it's not colliding or yeah, it's not colliding and it's not removing itself. Uh, this is because, that was a confusing sentence. What I'm saying is sometimes the object doesn't delete. What's happening here is there's no gap of time here. So it's like immediately on collision, like delete, right? Uh, and what if it deletes and then it doesn't recognize the collision? There should be some time in between. Uh, to do that, it's very simple. You could either wait one tick or I'm just gonna delay it by a visible amount of time just to make sure. And what I mean by that is after colliding, I want to delay by a fifth, 5% of a second, and then it should remove the object. So you're gonna see it gets hit, and then like it takes a second, but then it deletes. And you can see uh, now we, we did that like trick where we get it above. And really the rest of this is polish, like getting good colors, uh, making there be a loose condition. So like right there, what we'd say is if the ball has a Z component lower than um, a certain number, uh, it should reset itself. In fact, uh, let me just do that part, and we also need to do the win condition, but I will uh, skip that for now. Uh, so what we wanna say is if we get the position of the ball, and we wanna look at this uh, vector, if the Z component is less than zero, really, uh, but I'll do like negative one, uh, we're gonna have it reset. So if A is less than B, where B is negative one, then what I wanna do is I want to set position, I wanna tell it where to be for our referential object uh, to zero, zero, zero. No, it should have a Z component of like three. So under the condition that it's dipping below, then it should uh, reset. Let's see what that looks like. So there we go. <laughs> so uh, let me make it a bit lower than negative one so you can see what's going on here. So you can see it's hitting and then and I should also have it go a bit higher is what I'm seeing. So now it's, let me get a better spawn. So it's colliding and then it um, comes back. It actually keeps its momentum, uh, which is something you may or may not want. But uh, that's the thing. And we could also do a bit of a delay, I believe, just so that there is a similar kind of thing going on here. So maybe we could delay by 0.1 seconds uh, just so there, there is a bit of a lag. So it's gonna disappear, it's gonna wait, and then it's gonna launch again. So there we go, we have an operational game. And uh, by the way, the difficulty of this can be seen as the speed of the force. So if I increase this to 100, as you might imagine, now it's moving very fast and that is what high difficulty is. In fact, it's too high, I cannot. <laughs> there you go. So. Uh, that is the uh, tutorial. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do any more Blender Game Engine tutorials. It's just what I'm interested in at the moment. And I think it's new and there's not many tutorials on it on uh, YouTube. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.